gentlemen, let nothing you do say. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How glad to Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Glad tidings of comfort and joy. All in London heard about the glad tidings on their lips and joy in their hearts. All except one man. Good afternoon, Mr. Scrooge. Afternoon, sir. Mr. Scrooge celebrates Christmas differently. Oh dear, don't sugarcoat it. Ebenezer Scrooge is a cruel and cold man, whom you would never catch smiling or uttering the words Merry Christmas. Not a penny of his goes to charity. Never would a song escape his lips. There's no wreath on his door, no hand in the oven, and certainly no gifts hidden away. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Bah. Hum. You must remember, darling, his only friend and business partner, Mr. Morley, died seven years ago this very night. Christmas, it seems, holds nothing but bad memories and feelings for poor Mr. Scrooge. But there's nothing poor about Scrooge. He is one of the richest men in London. He owns that big house of town with four years of business. Yes, the old county house. He still has something to call Mr. Morley's name off the door. And the firm's only employee was a very hard-working, underpaid and handsome man named... Mr. Paltrat. Good afternoon, sir. I brought you the parcel you requested. It is wet. It was beginning to snow, sir. My eyes. Speak up, sir. I don't mean to. Yes. It's just that What is it, Mr. Cratchit? Might I put a coal on fire? Mr. Cratchit, if it becomes necessary for me to part with another lump of coal, it may become necessary for you to part with your position. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Oh. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God bless you. Humbug. Christmas? I mean, humbug? How amusing. Did you come here to be amused? Of course not. I came to invite you to Christmas dinner tomorrow evening. My lovely wife is so anxious to finally meet you. Mary! Did you not get the invitation? Why would you ever do such a thing? Why get married, Uncle? Because you fell in love, of course. Because you fell in love. That, my nephew, is more ridiculous than a Merry Christmas. Uncle, it's the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. I certainly hope not. You must lead a rather dreary life. Dreary? <laughs> Nonetheless, there should be a place waiting for you at my dinner table. Nephew, you keep Christmas in your own way. Let me keep Christmas in mine. Tomorrow evening, dinner will be served at eight. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Cratchit. Oh, Merry Christmas. There should be nothing merry about it if you insist on supporting this nonsense. Yes, sir. What do you do now? Do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead for seven years. I beg your pardon, Mr. Scrooge. I have the feeling that it's not all you have come to beg for. As a matter of fact, we are from the local church. And in this season of celebrations, it is often easy to overlook those among us who are uh, less fortunate. May we put you down for a contribution? You may not. Maybe at a later time, then. After the first of the year. Not now. Not ever. You must understand, sir, that many will go hungry and homeless without our help. Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses to shelter them? Many are afraid and would rather not go there. In fact, many would rather die. Then shouldn't they do so and thus decrease the surplus population? Many people in this miserable city, as it is. I assume, then, that you will not be helping us this year, Mr. Scrooge. How astute. You have assumed correctly. Good day. 
Merry Christmas, sir. Bless you, kind sir. Trap, back to your desk. Yes, sir. tomorrow off. If it is convenient. It is not convenient. Nor is it fair. It is only one day out of the whole year. Seems to me a poor excuse to pick a man's pocket every 25th of December. I shall expect you all the earlier the next morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And to have a merry... Well, good night, sir. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge found himself very much alone on this Christmas Eve, but as his eyelids grew heavy, he allowed himself to forget all about his work, the number, poor Mr. Marley, and all the nonsense of Christmas.
Starbucks sitting where I come from, just walking, walking all day, but never finding a destination. Why are you talking like that? Oh, sorry. I forget. I don't have to talk like that all the time. <laughs> it's really just for effect. May I? I, I didn't know that ghosts could be. That is what you are, isn't it? A ghost, an apparition, a spirit specter, whichever you prefer. Prefer? You were never this generous in life. How do I know that you are real? You could be just a figment of my imagination. A slight disorder of the stomach might be playing tricks on my senses. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an undercooked potato. There's more gravy than a grave about you, whichever you are. Hmm, gravy. <laughs> I do miss that. I'm just dying for some roast beef and vegetables. Uh, Jacob, stop this. And take off those awful things. If only I could, Ebenezer. But these are chains of my own making. All the hope, the charity, all that I kept for myself, now imprisons me forever. Seems a bit overdramatic. Mark my words. The young chain already has many links. Links that can only be made or unmade in this life. You are one of the wealthiest men in London, yet you hold it close, never giving away a cent. But that's smart business. I gave my whole life to business, but helping others should have been my business. I turned a profit, now look how it has turned me. That's what you come to tell me. Couldn't you have just written a letter? <laughs> There's still hope. You can still change paths. You'll be visited this very night by three spirits. This is the hope you speak of. It is. Expect the first of the toll of one. Uh, couldn't I just have them all at once and have it over with? Expect the second at two and the third upon the last stroke of three. Oh, wait. Uh, three spirits. All in one night. I need my rest, Jacob. I don't see why. I Look to see me no more. Wait. Can you stay a bit longer? Have that slice Look to see me no more. Jacob. Tell me more. Jacob. Jacob! Ghosts. <laughs> Humble. Then, either from sheer exhaustion, shock, or by some strange magic, Ebenezer Scrooge fell straight into a deep sleep. It is difficult to know how long he slept. He had no dreams and never stirred an inch until... Isn't that what Jacob said? Expect the first spirit at the stroke of one. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Jacob, you will... Are you the spirit who was foretold? I am. I don't know you, do I? Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? Your past. Come, Ebenezer. We have much to see in the time. Much to see? Where? Come. But I don't know where this leads. I've never seen this door in my life. Trust me. Come. It was the Christmas of a long past. More than 50 years ago. Who is it, Spirit? Don't you recognize him? Of course not I. Wait. Yes. Oh, spirit. Ebenezer? Ben? Little Ben. My sister. I am here, Ben. No need to shout. You can see her, but she cannot see you. Come on, please. I'm father will be home for Christmas. No more worries for the holidays. Isn't that wonderful? But what father no, wants no, to? No, no, don't worry about father. He's been so kind and gentle lately that I just had to ask his permission for you to come home. And he said yes. And we're to spend Christmas together. At home. Yes, at home. Here, I brought you a present for the trip. Called Alibaba and the Forty Thieves. Merry Christmas, Ebenezer. A remarkable woman, Ben. She took such care of me when my parents, well, when they could not. She died much too young. She had a son, did she not? Yes, yes, uh, my nephew Fred. 
Wait. Spirit, shouldn't we follow them? There is much at the sea. Come. It's time! Put your work away! Shake up, Ebenezer! It's Christmas Eve! No more work! <laughs> Do you recognize this place? Of course. It's old Mr. Fezziwig's. It's where I had my first job. Ebenezer! Jacob! Coming! Come, put down the ledger and join us. Look, look, there I am. I've got so much yet to do today. Forget just... about all that. Christmas Eve only comes once a year. Come on, I'll get you something to drink. Jacob! Come on, I'll get you some eggnog. Jacob Marley, you are a kind soul. A dance, a dance! Everyone, a dance! <laughs> Mrs. Fezziwig! <laughs> Mr. Fezziwig, one of the most big party men I have ever known. Something of a fool, though, I suppose. A fool? He was much too generous with his employees. Always throwing dinners and hosting parties. With the money he spent on that <coughs> him, he could have paid one of us for a month. Instead, he tried to buy our happiness. And were you? Were you happy? Why, well, yes. I, yes, I suppose so. What is the matter? No. I was just thinking of something I said to my clerk earlier today. Wait. I remember this now. Ebenezer. I would like to introduce you to my daughter, Anne. Anne? Anne, this is Ebenezer Scrooge. I am delighted. He's one of our finest employees. <laughs> Hurry, hurry, all of you, you don't want to miss this one. My ride, Mr. Fezziwee. Oh, my peach, you're such a sight to behold. <laughs> Shall we? You don't have to. Wouldn't want to miss out now, would we? Get on with it. Ha! What's the hurry? 
Stop. Don't you feel that? Have a look at that. But aren't we supposed to be going somewhere? It's Christmas. Where do you have to go? I was hoping you were going to tell me. The president is always here. We can take our time. Have a drink. But will the other spirits wait? Jacob told me there was a strict timeline. Very well, my old man. Here's a it. Through this door. Another. Survive. I see an empty stool and a lonely crash when you in the corner. These shadows are made on altar. Boy will die. Is there nothing that can be done? Done? Done what, Father? Why not let him die? Thus decreasing the surplus population. What else is there to see? Another feast in a different part of the city. <laughs> I don't believe it. He did. He said Christmas was a humbug, and he believed it, too. <laughs> oh, dear? Yes. Could we get another tray of those delicious cucumber sandwiches? <laughs> of course, my love. My goodness. What is it? My nephew has chosen well. How about a game, Freddy? Yes, a game. I've got one. It's called Yes or No. Do you all know it? Of course. All right. Guess what I'm thinking. Is it a plate? No. A mineral? Nope. An animal? Yes. A wild animal? Very. One found in London? Definitely. One that is sold at a market? No. One that is in the circuit? Not exactly. Is this a snarling, nasty animal who keeps himself? Yeah. 
I know what it is. Come on, do tell. It's your Uncle Scrooge. It is. <laughs> <laughs> to Uncle Scrooge, wherever he may be, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He couldn't take it from me, but may have it nonetheless. <laughs> yet to come. Friendly. <laughs> you have come to show me what might be. And are you going to be this silent the entire time? Wait! Wait up! Wait for me! Shh! You think this is far enough? Nobody's going to see us back here. What did we get? Let's see. Gold, frankincense, Murder. Really? No, oh, you fool. It's the crown jewels. I don't know these people. You must have something. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a Merry Christmas, gentlemen. That man must have had all these things just locked up for years. They don't even look like they've been touched. Throw it away. Solid money, nothing to spend on. How much you think this will go for? Oh, at least half a crown. Half a crown? Ridiculously underpriced. These people have no sense of what is valuable. You're sure he's not going to miss all of this? You want another gun? What do you mean? He decided to go away a trip. Decided to hop on a camel, follow the right side, and see where it leads him. I mean, he's not coming back from this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny? He's dead, all right? Finders keepers, they're very important, so that's the way we always did it. You miserable creatures, preying on others' misfortunes. This poor dead man ought to be given more respect. Surely he has some family. Friends? Why not you? I fear, I, I do fear what I may see. He saw me and had this look of great sadness. He gave me his card, 
and told me that if we needed anything at all, that we ought to come to him. It was as if he had known tiny Tim like we had. I must say, I am very happy. Very happy indeed. Merry Christmas, children. Merry Christmas, Father.
this the same Mr. Scrooge who rushed past them just yesterday? Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, good day to you. Uh, I do hope you had success yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Scrooge. Uh, yes, that is my name. And I'm afraid it may be a bit unpleasant to you. Allow me to beg your pardon. Is there still time to make a contribution? Of course, sir. Uh, in that case, I would like to give us some of... Lord bless me! <laughs> My dear! Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? Not farthing less. There are a great many back payments included in it, I assure you. I have decided to undertake a new kind of business. I don't know what to say. Uh, don't say anything, please. Come and see me and we'll make all the necessary arrangements. We will. Uh, and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This was only the first of several bizarre encounters that occurred that day as Mr. Scrooge walked down the streets of London, greeting everyone with a hearty Merry Christmas. Then, as he approached his destination, he became nervous until finally... Yes? Uh, pardon me, ma'am. I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. Dear, someone's at the door. And I wanted to tell your husband what a fine choice he has made by marrying you. Uncle Scrooge! Merry Christmas, nephew. I have decided to accept your invitation uh, to meet your new wife and to wish you the happiest of holidays. Freddie, can it be? Yes, dear. Meet my Uncle Scrooge. Delighted. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Oh, and uh, before I forget, a present for you, nephew. Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. It is a great tale of adventure. Your mother gave it to me many years ago. I thought you ought to have it. Thank you. Here, look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. A Merry Christmas to this beautiful home. Not a dreary corner in the place. Oh, where are my manners? Come in, come in. And he did. Mr. Scrooge was delighted to find himself enjoying warm apple cider, party games, laughter, and the company of his nephew. But he could not stay long. Mr. Scrooge had one more stop to make before this Christmas was over. Oh, God. 